so we're here at El Mexicano with Raul, and this is their family farm. They grow a lot of their produce here. Raul, you want to give us just a quick tour? Well, yeah. Welcome to the El Mexicano farm. We started this project about 17 years ago. We've brought a lot of seeds from the States and from Mexico, trying to get all the main ingredients for the produce to create beautiful uh, Mexican cuisine, authentic flavors. So we, we bring, of course, some of the tomatillos. There's some peppers over there. That's the king of the, the farm, Don Angel. Don Angel saluda Hola, a las cámaras. <laughs> He's the angel, that's his name, Angel. He's the oh, angel and creator of this farm. Uh, so yes, yeah. some rabano, some lettuce, of course. And okra. Okra, wow. why not? Yeah, you don't see that much here. Yeah. That's awesome. We tried to bring a little bit of different things to create in the restaurant. I mean, we mix a little bit of the fla Mexican flavor of salsas. And uh, yeah, so the whole purpose of the restaurant is every weekend we have a different kind of menu. Uh, we analyze what's going on here, and then we take it to the restaurant. Excellent. So we will we'll switch from, I don't know, beets, radishes, basil. We'll create different things, always with a Mexican twist, but uh, you know, using whatever we have. In the upper section, it's all the fruit trees, all the maracuya, oranges, lemons, all the oh, see. all the fruits in the top section. But this is the we just recently. Uh, went through a very strong supervision of some engineer of the Consejo Provincial de Loja because we were having problems with Cusos, a big problem here in, in uh, Velcavamba or in Loja. Yeah. And, uh, but he came and put some organic bacteria, organic matter to help uh, kill them from under and they can eat themselves and they, they can die and they can let all my, my plants grow. So we're having a very successful year. Uh, with everything else, it's just growing like crazy, thank God. Yes, it and, looks uh, great. So yeah, this is a little bit of the farm. Kale. Kale, tomatillos, different kind of peppers. Beets. Uh, beets, lettuce. You know, we have a lot of tomatillos because uh, you go through a lot with the salsas, a lot of lettuce, because yeah. of course we go through a lot in the salsas. Kale. Tomatillo. Kale was one of the uh, main uh, what was one of the produce that didn't die with all the kusos during the winter? Kale, it's pretty strong. Yes, Kale is very yeah. strong, and uh, but yeah, everything else kusos just kill them from the bottom. Have a little bit of onion. So you got uh, red onions. Some uh, do you have white onions too? Or? There's always different stuff here. Yeah. Uh, to tell the truth, I don't know if we have white well, onions. A right bit now. of garlic going <laughs> on. But yeah, a little bit of uh, garlic, a little bit of everything little that bit we everything. use. So, we're being so would you say that most all the produce for the restaurant comes from here? Yes. The, the whole yeah. idea of the place is to uh, slow kitchen, you know, slow process that has to be cooked all overnight. Uh, you know, try to make it healthy as well as uh, delicious. Try to go back like the grandmothers yes. used to cook. Whatever is in the farm, do the beans in clay pot overnight, try to not do the microwave. You know, try to do it everything. That's also part of the reason uh, why we only open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Because everything is done, the marination, slow process, and uh, also taking care of this, doing the tortillas. You know, everything. It's the long way, the long process, and nothing. It's. It's. it's I mean, we buy some food. of the ingredients to make something, but we'll make the butter. We make. We make the butter, the yogurt, the. Uh, the ice cream. We. I'm, we make pretty much everything. We just make this the... truly is farm to table. Yeah, farm to table. And uh, I mean, it's fun. Uh, the, the, also, the main reason is to keep it fun for the people that visit us, but also for for my staff. The people that are in the kitchen, I don't like them to cook every day, like, you know, mechanic. And so it's just them trying to get a little more creative and do different recipes, trying to give them always that twist, Mexican twist, but uh, use what's in the farm. So it's a very dynamic menu, a very dynamic restaurant uh, to create a, a different experience, but try to keep it like family, like the grandmothers. So that's, that's the whole point. So awesome. thank you for visiting us. 
Uh, sometimes I do bring people up here because they want to see it. They take, I love showing the farm. Sometimes it's a little complicated because of the time. But as you've seen, it, it was very close from the restaurant to here. So sometimes we run out of something and I call Angel, please just have me. I'll send somebody on a bike and they'll come down. So it's, they picked it up and they'll put it on your table. So it's within minutes, it, awesome. within minutes, really. I mean, sometimes we don't run out of things and it's like, okay, go to the farm and it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, we also, my family, my Keon and uh, Lily, we got fed from that, you know? So it's, it's also a big part. A lot of times when there has been in these 16, 17 years, slow moments, you know, crash moments for Velkavamba that you, sometimes I'm just ready to give up the farm because it's you know it's expensive to keep up a farm it's it's easier just to go to supermax it's to store and buy one bag of lettuce or buy three bags of lettuce i mean you don't have to keep it oh, okay this is gonna go bad or this this uh the kusas came and they're gonna kill it because you're still investing but uh my family's eating off from that and uh, so that's that price you know overcomes everything else and uh, we've been able to keep this up we with care of angel and some other friends and so far so good that's awesome well we'll go see the restaurant yeah let's go out and check out the restaurant where all this food gets all transformed well i'm here with two of the loveliest people in Vilcabamba, my friends raul and his beautiful wife liliana and we're at their wonderful restaurant el mexicano so I wanted to just ask a few questions and uh, have them tell us a little bit about their restaurant and their history. So Raul, where are you guys from originally? Okay, my name is Raul Hernandez. I come from Mexico City. Uh, I was born and raised over there. I lived in the U.S. also, in high school in Massachusetts. And uh, I'm going to speak. You want to say who you are, yeah, where you're hi. from? Hi, hi, I'm Liana. Uh, I am... Ecuador, I live here in Vilcabamba like uh, six years, years ago. Um, but of course I am Ecuadorian, but uh, now I'm, I'm working in the, the Mexican food. You were born in Loja? Yeah, yeah I'm born in Loja. Yep. Fantastic. And so how long have you guys had the restaurant? I've done Mexican restaurants uh, for the last 16 years, 17 years, but always in town. Uh, we were in Mexico City when the COVID thing started, so we got stuck over there. The, the border was closed here in Ecuador, so we weren't able to come back. We spent the whole year in Mexico. Uh, of course, we call, we call our friends, get all the stuff out of the place because I couldn't pay rent. So I emptied the restaurants, left it. At, this was like a bodega, like a storage place. And uh, that's what we did over there for the whole year. We, we, she studied a lot of the Mexican cuisine, the ingredients, the history. Uh, we went to a lot of different towns of different states, live with different families to learn how would they do. Like for Hidalgo, we would go and learn how to do the, the uh, barbacoa. So we would live there. We would learn how to cut the agave leaves, how to burn them to embrace the, the lamb, how to do the whole process. We would go to the market, we would go to the farms. We went to Yucatan to we learn about the, the cochinita pibir. So we would go to every different state and live with the families to learn. Because in Mexico, it was pretty open, so we were able to do all of this. And uh, so, yeah, when we came back, we didn't know what was going to be the deal over here. She learned also a lot about herbs, about plants. We didn't know if we were going to be selling medicinal plants. We, we didn't know. So we tried to learn as much as we could and to come back and open. And we started the restaurant with two little tables here in my house because it was all we got so we opened with two little tables and little by little it started growing fantastic what a great place to be stuck though if you have to be stuck somewhere yeah oh no in mexico it was great we had a blast with my my daughter uh we traveled a lot it was we had a lot of fun we had a lot of we had a, lot, a lot of good food and uh well she learned a lot so i'm very happy you know she's a lot of people uh from ecuador say well who cooks because if it's not a Mexican, I'm not interested. And uh, I'm always very proud to say uh, that uh, an Ecuadorian cooks Mexican food. When she goes to Mexico, any big, like Independence Day in Mexico, she's the one that will cook the, like the main Independence meals with our, which are a little more elaborated, uh, like chiles en hogada. They're very, uh, you know, exotic. She's the one in charge of cooking for all my uncles and my cousins. 
Mexican flavors. The technical dishes. Uh, the technical dishes uh, for the big feast. She's the one that makes it uh, because they, they're, you know, she's got the touch and she's very passionate about it. So an Ecuadorian cooks Mexican food, but she's, she's, she's something else. <laughs> so would you say your inspiration as a chef came from your time in Mexico? Uh, yeah, but I'm, all the time I'm saying I'm not a chef. I am, um, I don't know the name, do your father call me? Uh, she, uh, my, call, my father calls her a researcher. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, for me it's a researcher. Yeah, it's, it's because uh, all the time I'm trying to look for in the, the recipes and reading about uh, how, how this spice in this dish, how it works in this dish. So for that reason, uh, I like the name uh, research, research, researcher. researcher. Researcher, sorry for my English. But yeah, everything uh, was started in Mexico in the pandemic. In the pandemic, for me, it was the best time of my life because I'm learn, I'm learning everything about the Mexican food. But everything because uh, the not only Mexican food, the uh, everything culture, the culture of course. The ev I know everything about Mexico now, but. For me, in the cuisine, I can say uh, the food is not only uh, you need to put then and then and then. But for me, uh, the, the, the cuisine is, is very um, special because uh, the food is your life. The food is your, your healthy. The food, the food is everything in your life. So uh, for that reason, it's a patient for me, the, 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 the cuisine all the time when I talk with the my customer, I told uh, the. Oh, sorry. Hola, hola, hola. <laughs> so, uh, for that reason, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forget. Uh, yeah, everything started in, in in the COVID. The COVID for me, I'm very grateful in this, for this time. About I can, ¿cómo se dice conocer? Knowledge. Yeah, all the knowledge that you get during the pandemic. Yeah. But I, I know about more of the, my family, the time for my baby, time for my husband, and for that reason, for, okay, for me, the kitchen is the best way to say I love you, to say thank you for coming, to say thank you for staying there in my table, so, yep. It was a little bit what we, I was explaining to you up at the garden. We tried to make it, as she said, not only, well, put two teaspoons of this, more of a, a ritual, more like the grandmother. If I'm inviting you to my house, it's a special, it's a special thing. I gotta trust you. It's some, It's like a ritual I'm gonna share with you. So we try to do it the same thing here. Uh, with the people, with the customers that come, it's especially when they start coming more often. You know, well, we know how are you doing? How's your daughter doing in school? So it's a little more family, family, family. Well, we try to. And, and food is a very personal thing. It's a very it's... personal thing. A lot of people have asked me to open up places. In Quito, in Manta, in Guayaquil, in Cuenca, in Loja. I want to keep it small and here local because if I make it big, then I lose control of everything else. So I need small. I can keep control of the people who work with me, uh, the people who come. It's, you know, I like it. We like it little. Yeah. On a more personal basis with everything. Right. Well, uh, I think that um, there's no doubt in my mind that Liliana is the brains and the beauty of this operation. For sure, for and, sure. Uh, you're the muscle and the salesman. <laughs> I don't know what I've got, yeah. but yeah, if, if she she leaves, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And very good, you know, Raul has a wonderful personality and so does Liliana. But I think that, you know, that reflects into the restaurant and reflects into the quality of their food. And uh, as you saw at the farm, they grow almost all the, um, the uh, Produce. produce that they use here, a lot of the fruits, and so it's it, you can't get much more farm to table than that. It's uh, it's really is a fresh quality that you taste in their food. And I think that's very very important. So Raul and Liliana, um, when is a good time for your customers to come? We are open uh, Friday and Saturdays from twelve to nine, lunch and dinner, and Sundays from twelve to seven. It's I usually suggest people not to come Sunday lunch because it's really packed. <laughs> the best day to come is Friday uh, or Saturday. But uh, Sunday lunch, it's, it's a lot of action. All the people from Loja come with all the family. So this place is packed. 
So Friday and Sunday night, I think, are, are, are great times to come. But the, we are only open during the weekends. The rest of the week, we prepare all the ingredients. We eat homemade tortillas, homemade salsas. Uh, I bring the peppers from Mexico every three, four months. So it's very authentic Mexican flavors. Uh, but yeah, we're only open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it's possible for your customers to get a margarita here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're open with different dishes all week, all, all the weekend. But yeah, we try to, uh, our main margarita here, we serve at a cactus, a nopal, which is one of the main ingredients for Mexico, and uh, passion fruit. It's a lemon, coconut, but those are like our, our star margaritas, uh, the, the cactus they, and uh, passion fruit. Uh, they can ask for the passion fruit with chipotle. It's, uh, it's an amazing flavor that the people need to try. It's, it's a little hot, but... It's a little spicy. Yeah, a little spicy. Yeah, delicious. It's delicious. Yeah. We try to play with the flavors. It just sells more margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so folks, when you're traveling to Ecuador or you're coming here to think about relocating here, or you just want to check out all of Ecuador, you've got to come to Vilcabamba in southern Ecuador, and you need to check out this restaurant. Well, and Liliana put their, their all their passion into their food, and uh, they really treat their customers like their family. Thank you for watching. Hope you subscribe and thumbs up. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.